let's talk about the cloud service model, specifically the service model from NIST. Now, when it comes to cloud computing, the National Institute of Science and Technology, NIST, which is based out of Maryland, the DC area, uh, has traditionally been a real proponent of cloud computing. And they came up with essentially a cloud computing model for basically not only the government, but just industry in general to be able to follow and understand how cloud architectures, cloud services, deployment models should be um, sort of viewed. Now, they also, of course, provide a lot more. I'll let you view their website and see the available white papers, best practices, etc. Now, for this specific module around the Cloud Plus exam, I just want to talk about some areas that I think you'll really want to make sure that you understand before taking this exam. When it comes to cloud computing, cloud computing in general needs to have what's called essential characteristics. These are going to be essentially the minimal characteristics, features, essentially capabilities that the service should have. The first is broad network access. This meaning that you as a consumer can access the service from anywhere that uh, is appropriate to you. So if you're in um, India or if you're in the US or in Brazil, uh, then you can get to that service. If you're at work or you're on your mobile device on a uh, subway car and you want to access the cloud services, then you should be able to do that. That's pretty much what broad network access means from any location, from any device, essentially. That's typically a high level way to look at it. Now, rapid elasticity is really focused mainly around, are you able to deploy a service, but also address the requirements of that service? This meaning that if there's significant demand, a surge in demand, let's say, are you able to scale up as needed? But what about if you don't need, a, need all those VMs anymore or that storage that you needed at one time? Well, you should be able to, of course, scale down as needed. That is essentially rapid elasticity. Measured service, we want to, of course, pay for only what we use, not anymore, and, of course, probably never less. But basically, measured service is, of course, going to uh, be utilized to make sure that you are uh, basically being charged for the appropriate amount of services you consume. On-demand cell service, this is simply basically stating that you are able to access your cloud service when you want uh, and you don't need to have any kind of uh, request handled manually from the cloud provider. Generally, for example, like in managed services, we would typically need to put in a request to the managed service provider for additional virtual machines, additional storage. That could take a couple hours, a couple days, or whatever that request um, is requiring. Could be even longer. Perhaps one of the more significant areas around cost savings for using services is resource pooling. Well, essentially, if you think about it, if you have a thousand users sharing a resource, the cost of that is driven down because it's shared among the users. Now, if you deploy a service in your enterprise, your enterprise is actually funding that wholly. And therefore, because you're not sharing it, you have the burden of paying the whole cost. Therefore, if you want to deploy VMs and it was costing you a minimum of, let's say, for 100 VMs, $50,000 a year, just you know, basic uh, maintenance of it, let's say, and you go to the cloud, well, that's driven down to a few hundred or less than $1,000, let's say, or 200, whatever, two, two, you know, $2,000 or, you know, $200 a VM per year. Let's just say you're only 
minimally using micro uh, configurations. Whatever that is, that, that cost has been driven down. All right, now service model. This is where we need to think about how we deploy, for example, our applications. Now applications we could deploy basically as a software as a service. This is where you as a consumer do as little as possible and allows you to just use, for example, a human resources application or a, a customer relational management application or it could even be a storage service, whatever whatever that is. In other words, you're just basically using the service, you're importing your account information, maybe saving contact information. That's really about it. So SaaS is really um, where the provider handles most of the tasks. Platform as a service is typically deployed in development environments. This is going to be where you as a uh, for example, developer would want to deploy your service and have a runtime available and have the resources handled and managed for you in the back. Now, infrastructure as a service is a little different. This is where, for example, you're going to be deploying virtual machines and you're going to deploy on top of the VMs, your, your host OS, your applications, and then customize everything. You're going to typically handle the performance of those VMs. So it's really about how much you want to do and how much you want to pay for. Deployment models, this is how we're going to deploy our cloud uh, services. It could be a public cloud service we use, a private cloud where, again, the service is only for your organization or membership. Um, hybrid cloud is a combination of one or more of the deployment models. So for example, a lot of organizations use public and private, basically, um, deployment models. And basically, if they have two of these, that's considered typically a hybrid uh, cloud uh, service. When it comes to community, this is where, for example, you may have a military organization, a nonprofit, educational type of like-minded uh, consortium in a lot of cases, sharing the resources. And here's a good example of the shared service model. Now the shared service model basically will show you here, for example, under infrastructure as a service, where you're going to manage essentially these specific tasks and then the provider will handle the other areas such as the VMs, the networking, uh, manage the hardware as well. That again is a shared service model where you are required, of course, as a consumer to handle some things such as setting up your accounts. The provider on the other hand will handle support, maintenance, upgrades, etc. That is a shared service model. So you could see here, comparing on-premises over to the left, that's where your organization has full control over uh, everything and has all the tasks to, to manage as well. Not to mention the burden for the uh, cost as well. Now, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. For example, infrastructure as a service, we could compare this, for example, to EC2, Compute Engine. You could see here from the virtual machines basically down, uh, the provider handles, and then above that, after your, of course, your VMs are deployed, you can then install the operating system, the applications, add your data, etc. Platform as a service, your developers will likely want to use this because they're not going to have to worry about anything in the background. It's all typically managed for them. And all they need to do is load their data and then develop their applications. And then software as a service, this is going to be a course basically where you sign up for some kind of a cloud service, could be a CRM like Salesforce, could be a backup as a service like Mosey, it could be a human resources app such as Workday or an ADP based application, whatever that requirement is, you don't really need to worry about as a consumer 
anything in the background. The applications develop. All you need to do is create your accounts, pay for it, maybe load some data, save some data, contacts, whatever that is. You're good to go. And lastly, we, of course, want to just make sure we go into the exam having an idea, of course, SAS, PaaS, and infrastructure as a service. Now, SAS is really, again, really where the provider is going to give you the application, and then you simply do what? Log in, create your accounts, save your data, import data, possibly whatever that requirement is. You get to work. Platform as a service, this is going to be a course developer focused. Infrastructure as a service, this is where going, it's going to be basically where you as an organization deploy virtual machines instead of on-prem, but in the cloud. Let's go ahead and move on.